Good morning, Professor Ghana. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My presentation titled Conception and Realization of Information Strategies for Cell Management Functionalities. I would like to start my presentation with a little clip. Huh? Noise! Bad noise! Five minutes before critical mass. Okay, somewhere there's a thingy that tells you how to work this stuff. The, uh, the, uh, the manual! The manual! Right! Uh-huh! Ah! It's as bad as a phone book! Ooh, what's this? No! Who'd have thought a nuclear reactor would be so complicated? Seconds to core meltdown. Eeny, teeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Well, Mr. Simpson isn't exactly the smartest person on earth. However, the previous clip shows us that automation systems are becoming more and more complex every day. To address this issue, self management systems and self management functionalities have been researched at EIS. Different functionalities have been developed, and these functionalities have different goals. This resulted in us having conflicts. The solution to this problem, this is what I've been researching during my thesis. Now I'm going to start with a little overview of my uh, presentation. I'm going to start first with the problem definition. I'm going to go then and explain the theory behind the coordination strategy. I'm going to explain the, pro the prototype that I implemented and show a live demonstration, and finally I'm going to end up with a summary. Starting with the problem definition, first question is, what is self-management? And the answer is, it's autonomous execution of system management tasks without any user interaction. This results in reduced system complexity in, from, from the point of view of the system operator. So the system operator finds it easier to deal with self-management, with, 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 the, with the system. Self-management, any self-management system has multiple goals. The first one is self-configuration, so the system can configure itself. The second one is self-optimization, so it can <clears throat> adjust its parameters to act, to act in a more efficient way. Third one is self-healing, so the system can compensate for failures if they exist. The fourth one is self-protection, so if there is an emergency, just like the case of the nuclear, uh, nuclear reactor, it knows how to do an emergency shutdown. And the last one is self-explanation. So the system can generate its own reports to make itself more explainable to the user. All of these functionalities together form what's called self-ex or self-management functionalities. The next question that arises is how can we build a self-management system? Over here, we see a traditional automation system that consists of a technical system and the operative automation system. The operative system was ex is extended using a self-management interface. And then this interface interacts with a self-management system, and together they form a self-management process. In order to study self-management systems, at EIS we um, modeled self-management self -management, a self -management system using mini robots. So over here, we have our technical system consisting of 10 robots. They receive the commands using a Bluetooth server, and their position is being tracked using video tracking software. After that, a colleague of mine developed a mini robot steering system. Of course, we have a self-management interface and, again, an operative system. The main purpose of this steering system is that the user over here gives a certain route, and this route is being forwarded to the robots, and they start driving around this route. After that, another colleague of mine developed a, um, a self-management self system, which basically decides on how to do the steering. So, for example, it can say, give me two robots on the route, and this command over here will get translated in the operative system to a certain route, and it will get forwarded to the robots. The concentration of my thesis was on the self-management system over here. <clears throat> the self-management system is agent-oriented, so every component inside this architecture is an agent. It consists of two levels. The first level is self-management functionalities. So over here, all of the functionalities are in one level. Um, in, the, in the original design, we had two functionalities implemented. The first one was the robots on route. So the user decides, OK, I want two robots on a certain route. And it makes sure that it has all of these robots, on, uh, that it has that certain amount of robots on the route at a certain time. The second one is the withdraw agent. So 
the purpose of this functional and emergent functionality is that it monitors the battery levels and it makes sure that they're all are above, above a certain level. If they're below that level, they would get sent to a charging station or what we call a depot. Next, we have the self-management framework. It consists of multiple agents, and the purpose of this framework is to support the self-management functionalities. Over here, we have the system agent. The purpose of it is to launch the self-management functionalities and to load some configuration data. Then we have the user interaction agent, which provides an interface so the user can interact with the system using a GUI. Then we have the report agent that generates logs for the user's convenience. Then we have a communication agent that acts as an interface to the operative system. So any commands that are being sent to the operative system go through the communication agent. Finally, we have the coordination agent over here. The main purpose of it is to control the resource access and to coordinate different self-management functionalities. The way it does that is by implementing a coordination strategy. <coughs> the coordination agent is where I'm going to implement my strategy, and it's the main focus of my thesis. The original coordination strategy was semaphore-based. So it's more like a first-come, first-serve. Access to the resources is controlled by the means of a semaphore. But this had many problems. The first one is that we have racing conditions. So, the, um, so like the self-management agent, try all to grab the semaphore and lock it at the same time. And this obviously results in a racing condition. The result of the racing condition is that the system becomes non-deterministic. So if we have the same scenario repeated over and over, each time we would get different results. Furthermore, a semaphore-based semaphore solution oversimplifies the problem because it looks at the system from a resource point of view rather than from a logical point of view. For example, if the robots on route agent wants five robots on a route, however, the withdraw agent says that only robots are allowed, only four robots are allowed because of the battery levels, over here we have an obvious conflict. Which one do we allow to execute? As a result, we needed a new and an advanced coordination strategy. So during my thesis, I had the following tasks. First one is designing a generic coordination strategy that can be applied in general. The second one was implementing this coordination strategy inside the coordination agent that we have. Then I had to integrate the new coordination agent with the overall self-management system. And finally, I had to implement an extra self-management functionality so that I can evaluate the, the, strength and the, the strengths and the weaknesses of the coordination strategy. This brings us to the end of the first part.